If you have no idea what this is, it's possible that you just clicked on a weird thumbnail and hope for the best. I'm totally in support of clicking on the weird thumbnails. This is probably not going to help you understand this at all. This video is going to be about doing the Blender Donut tutorial. It's actually about three things. The most important of the three is about giving money to Andrew Price for creating what is probably a master class in tutorials generally and certainly the most recognizable tutorial series regards using Blender. The second is some thoughts about what I found helpful while working through this donut tutorial. The last thing will be to discuss some other tutorials that I found to be both helpful, simple, and interesting. So let's go. So this is the donut that I made from the tutorial. I did the best I could at the time, um, following the instructions as closely as I could, and here we go. So I did a second donut. This donut is a completely different donut, as was suggested to just try it again. This one uh, went through much, much quicker, and if you'll notice, the icing, I've turned on the subsurface color, which really makes a difference in the brown. Um, again, this looks much better than the pink one, and um, yeah, this donut, this is a different donut. This is the same donut, which has a different texture applied to the base of it. This, was a, this is not a polygon texture. This was a texture which I found. It was kind of at this point where I decided I just want to just play around with um, the second donut that I have and see what I could just kind of bolt onto it. And it was at this point I was kind of thinking about, you know, this is really a great tutorial, and I'd like to give Andrew Price some money. And uh, he doesn't have a Patreon or any of the, uh, you know, give me money kind of stuff set up. But he does have a company, and that company is called Polygon. And that Polygon has lots of assets. Those assets are very nice. So this hardly a donut that you're looking at right now is actually the same donut we saw previously. Some of the settings have been changed. I changed the sprinkles. And um, it's just kind of a lot of fun. However, none of these are polygon textures. And uh, wanted to move on to the next thing. So we bought a package from Polygon, bought a bunch of assets. I had wanted to play with a, a grass simulation because I think they're neat. And this is what I ended up with. So these are all polygon textures. The base, the dirt on top of the donut, the grass is kind of a polygon texture. The items which are in there, bottles and blenders and scales, uh, I think I have some other items. Those are all polygon textures. The grass is made from a clump. We need to use a clump for the simulation. Polygon does not sell a clump of grass as such. Um, I ended up doing a thing with a tutorial that I'll be talking about uh, towards the end of this video. However, the point of this kind of section is, again, about giving Andrew Price money. And I'm thinking about it. I'm realizing that actually buying assets from Andrew Price is probably better than giving him money through something like a, a tipping structure or a Patreon or something like that, where they hit with a, a percentage. Plus, depending on how things go down in Australia, it's possible that those funds come in as gifts and are taxed differently than if they came in as business profits, which, uh, let's be clear, that's what Andrew Price does. And if um, he wants to expand Polygon and his people, that's fine. If he wants to buy a McLaren, I'm, uh, I'm down with that as well. Good for you, Andrew Price. So as we move into what I found helpful doing the tutorial, I'll just suggest, um, you know, buying, buy some assets from Polygon and do weird stuff with them. It's totally cool. So this is my basic setup. There's two monitors here. This is a much older monitor, which is perfectly fine for running YouTube videos. This is my better monitor and the larger monitor and the one that's running my Blender instance, which I'm following here. You can do whatever with this um, tutorial here, Blender reference on a different tab, back to that. Two monitors is very important. I don't know how anybody does this with just the one monitor. This again was a very inexpensive monitor. Uh, whatever you need to do to get a second monitor up, well worth the effort. Piece of paper and a pencil, optional, whatever. This is not part of my regular setup. This is a super uh, inexpensive, this was actually a free LCD TV monitor that I had in the attic. You may have one just like it yourself in your attic, which is being run 
off of this ancient um, Asus tablet experience thing. This is a pretty standard cell phone. A lot of us can run cell phones into a television like this with a cable. The cable that I saw on the Amazon was 15 bucks. This is an ancient tank of a notebook. This is perfectly fine for running the YouTubes. Um, again, whatever effort you can make to get a second monitor into this mix here, totally worth it. This is the Blender interface. One thing I found myself developing as I was going through the tutorial is creating sort of a way of viewing, a way of looking at this workspace in the interest of comparing it to what Andrew Price is presenting to us. And I found myself pretty regularly doing a clockwise sweep of the workspace when things didn't look right. So an example, this is the layout workspace. If you expected to see the works, excuse me, Andrew Price is working with the layout workspace, and what you're looking at is this. This happens to be the shading workspace. However, if you stop and you realize, I, this doesn't look right, I should do a clockwise sweep around the interface and discover, yes, Andrew Price is on the layout workspace. I'm on the shading workspace. Layout. This whole, that whole thing goes throughout the whole workspace with all these little things. Um, this is viewport shading. We could be doing different things with that. And particular with when we come over here to the um, properties menu, one thing that we'll notice is nothing is selected on this donut. So if I was to select the base of the donut, I'll get different options in this, which is the properties menu, than I would if I had selected something else. So in example, we will click on the material properties. And if we scale up here a little bit, you'll notice that the subsurface color, I believe that this is a, um, a texture painting graphic, which goes on the the body of the donut. I have the donut selected. If what I'm expecting is to see a different, if I'm expecting to see the um, properties of the icing, but I don't have it selected, that's a problem. So we'll select the icing and you'll notice that I have both the, you know, the pink and the subsurface and such. If I have the wrong thing selected here, this is going to look totally different. Another fun thing about this is tab which moves us from object mode to edit mode you can see that my screen capture keys thing pops in here this is we're going tab tab in and out of edit mode I am in the uh, the materials outliner right now if I hit tab it doesn't do anything if I'm in properties it doesn't do anything if I'm in this is the um, what is this the animation Playback editor, whatever the case is, hitting tab, not doing anything. It's when I'm in this window that the tab function suddenly works. Another thing that comes up pretty frequently is N. We're going to hit N. Let's hit N. N is this is the tool, the tool menu, and uh, that pops up quite a bit. If you're not entirely sure how to get that in and out, it's N, and we're going to press N. So you want to remember that. That's where that comes out. There's different, there's different tabs within the tool menu. Um, I believe the only one that we use in this is the item tab. I could be mistaken. N. We're going to do that. So we've uh, covered that. We've covered tabbing in different areas. You're going to want to develop your own way of rotating through this to look for changes in here. And I've found myself doing that a lot. This is a Firefox window with part 16 of Blender Guru's donut tutorial. What I'd like to direct your attention to is as we scroll down, you'll notice that there are about 2,700 comments on this. Throughout doing this tutorial, I got hung up in a couple of spots and searching through the comments was super important and allowed me to, to discover things that I never would have found by my own. 
there's 2,000, there's 2,700 comments on here. So if you wanted to search through every single one of them to try and find if anyone's helping your troublesome issue, you can do that. Another thing that we can do is if we follow the cursor, this is a Firefox window. We're going to go into the upper right-hand corner to the hamburger menu, and we'll come down here and we'll click Find in Page. Find in Page is going to open a window at the bottom, so we're going to follow down here. This is the lower left where it says Find in Page. Hopefully you can see that. And we're going to type in Thank You. That's going to allow us to search through the entirety of the comments to look for our search term, which, uh, you know, if, if you were to, to pick a, a word, in example, render or shadows, which somebody may have put a comment in here, which is helpful to you. Um, one thing you'll also notice is that a number of these comments have been upvoted. Um, people who get hung up on something and there's a comment in there which is particularly helpful tend to upvote things. Do that as well. A lot of the most helpful comments may be at the very top. Look at the comments. The comments are super helpful. We've probably all done a whole bunch of different random tutorials throughout playing with the Blender. Uh, I have no idea what order I was doing things in. However, one set of tutorials that I would like to make mention of is Matt over at Learn Everything About Design has a Learning Blender Slowly series, which is largely focused on people coming over from Fusion 360 into Blender and just covers simple things. One of the things I really liked about these is that they're all pretty short and they're focused very much on specific functions within the blender and what's nice is that it's all pretty much controllable and um, they're short and you can just kind of spend some little your own time with it and just sort of mess with things which is nice you don't have to be sort of focused and going towards an end goal of any kind he doesn't do any actual renders for the most part and that's sort of the focus of what he's doing I will put this in the uh, descriptions again I, I really um, I really thought these were very nice so after you get if you're just starting with the blender after you spend some time finding a generally working through the interface kind of introduction to the work interface sort of thing there's a whole ton of them and they're all pretty short um, Maybe come over and give uh, Matt at Learn Everything About Design a look on some of these tutorials. I will show you some brief samples of the stuff in his series. This is my blend file for the tutorial on soft body physics and just setting up a simple soft body demonstration. This is uh, three planes and a, a single sphere set up with soft body and you can play with the different settings on this uh, not a very long tutorial and just some simple stuff to play with some different settings as i had said the learning blender slowly tutorials generally don't do renders i wanted to do a render of this soft body tutorial as i thought it was kind of neat two things to notice about this one is the camera movement is not part of his tutorial the second is that putting individual colors on faces is a slight difference which he does not cover either this is my blend file from the learn everything about design tutorial about particle systems and if you can see from the top there's a particle system which is emitting particles and you can play with the different counts and different rates and such the wind generator on the left is another thing that's covered, as is the ground surface, which is the um, collision surface. If we sort of scroll around here, I'll click on the block and we'll scale that. And we can obviously play with the size of this thing, which is really very simple and nice stuff. This is my render of the Learning Blender Slowly Particle Systems tutorial. I thought it was going to be neater based on some of the shadows that I was seeing in still frame renders. I'm realizing that I must have done this 
series of tutorials after doing the donut as the renderer is uh, largely informed by what Andrew Price suggests in his donut tutorial. Back with my final donut and the grass simulation that I used to put the grass on it. I think this is an excellent simulation by ICOM Design. There'll be a link in the description. This is a couple of my renders from the tutorial. This Taurus that you're about to see is a sample mostly of the same. This is probably about half of the tutorial as a lot of it covers putting grass on different terrain, which is, uh, again, an excellent tutorial. For this simulation, you need to provide your own clump of grass. Polygon does not have a clump of grass, but what they do have is the image in the center, which is of individual blades of grass, that are crafted into a clump, which you're seeing rotating on either your left or right. This was made from a tutorial by CG Geek called Creating Realistic Glass in Blender. This will be in the description as well. Although it may seem otherwise, I really didn't want to focus on any of my donuts so much as I wanted to shamelessly plug Polygon and thank Andrew Price, Polygon, and whoever else was involved in producing a tutorial which likely defines what a tutorial is in the Blender space. I also wanted to share some tutorials that I found helpful to this stage of my journey. And finally, to present that one can have some fun with the donut once you understand how it was made. And finally, to kind of close this thing out by way of uh, both a personal confession and a thank you to other people who do tutorials, what you're looking at is my render from the ICOM design tutorial on grass simulations. You'll notice that the, each of these individual blades of grass have a different color on all faces. At the point of doing this tutorial and after having done the donut, I realized I did not know how to put an individual color on individual faces of the same mesh. ICOM Design does not include um, this instruction in his tutorial, and I looked elsewhere to find a simple tutorial for doing a simple operation, which uh, I guess we can all simply take for granted, but I just didn't know how to do. So I guess this would be a thank you to all of the other people who do tutorials that um, I think we all benefit from. And lastly, I'd like to apologize to Polygon for doing this to what is a wonderful model of a blender that they've produced. I thought this was going to come out much neater than it did. I am getting better, and I hope that we all do too.